How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. Part 17. Removing and refitting the cladding using some sealant around the inlet and exhaust ports of the cylinder castings. I'm changing all the studs as the original ones had been damaged by having been over tightened during the initial assembly. I would like to take this opportunity to apologise for the state of my hands. Even though I washed them several times, you cannot get rid of certain things mainly the oil and dirt from the inside of the oil bath air filter from my old Series 2A Land Rover. What I'm doing at the moment is removing all the brass screws that currently hold the cladding in place and putting them all in a safe place, namely the red box. When I first fitted the cladding, I used some bolts to hold the exhaust flange in position. I need to silver solder a 90 degree elbow to it. More about this in another episode shortly, when I make the condenser. You may have noticed that the alignment between the mounting holes and the exhaust port is not exactly perfect, but it doesn't affect the way the engine runs in any way. I just tried to match my cladding to the way the castings have been drilled, and this is more evident in part of this episode that's coming up. I bought some of this stuff. JB Weld really do make some excellent products. This is high temperature red silicone and it's claiming temperature resistance up to 340 degrees centigrade. As the engine will never reach this temperature, I can assume it to be the right stuff for the job. I puncture the top using the other side of the cap in the normal way and then I screw on the adapter after first cutting it at 45 degrees. You have to be careful when you apply sealants. Don't apply too much, otherwise when it all gets squashed together, the sealant may go where you don't want it to go. To illustrate this, first I applied too much, and after wiping some of it away with a cloth, I started to refit the cladding to the engine. I know you've already seen me do this in a previous episode, but for the sake of continuity, I'm doing it again. It's getting a bit risky at this time, because if the screwdriver slips and scratches the cladding, I have a big problem, so I'm taking care not to do that. I'm trying to make sure that the screwdriver blade is centralised on the small brass dome head bolts. I re-threaded all of these holes to 6BA, they were originally 7BA, and most of the holes were chewed up. But now they're OK, and the fit is good between every bolt and the corresponding hole in the casting. I fitted the exhaust flange to hold the cladding against the sealant, but then, as you can see, I removed it. As I mentioned earlier, I need to silver solder an extension to this to make the pipe face backwards. The exhaust pipe will be quarter of an inch in diameter. Originally, there was a quarter by 40 threads per inch adapter soft soldered into this exhaust flange. That's no good at all, the hole was far too small. It strangled the engine and reduced the power considerably. Time to fit the mounting studs. Here they are. There's a specific way of putting these together. These are quite early studs with a blank bit in the middle. Generally speaking, you fit the nut onto the shortest part of the thread. That way, all the nuts are in the same position when they're tightened up. It's important not to forget the gasket. This particular gasket is not from this part. It's from one of the pipes on the other side. I need to make a new one when I fit this permanently. I cleaned up this exhaust flange and it looks a lot better. I also removed every trace of the soft solder because very shortly, as I mentioned earlier, I will be silver soldering a part onto this. As I tighten the flange into position, you can see that some of the sealant squeezed out at the end of the cladding. I remove this with a cloth. Turning the engine around now, it's time to work on the more difficult side. Believe it or not, by rearranging the cylinder drains, I managed to make it so that only two of them needed shim washers. The rest fitted perfectly. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologise for the holes in the cladding not being in exactly the right place. The holes were worse than this on the original cladding that was used, but don't worry, it will be OK when it's all together. It's only the cylinder drain holes that are in the wrong place. The rest of the holes line up perfectly with the original holes in the casting. Considering that this engine was built starting about 24 years ago, 
by a beginner, I really don't think it's too bad. If you disagree with this comment, I suggest that you try making one. After carefully applying the silicone rubber sealant, I fit the cylinder cladding to this side. You can see that some of the sealant has actually squeezed out towards the holes, which are the exhaust and inlet holes. This was cleaned out before I continued. I fitted the three brass dome head screws first. There aren't so many of them at this side. Now it's time to use some of this stuff. It is called SAS Nutlock. I got this bottle from a company called Clevedon Steam. It's very similar to Loctite 243, and it holds parts in the correct place beautifully. I've even used it on water gauges, and it holds the top and bottom fittings perfectly in alignment. Here are the six cylinder drains laid out in the order in which I took them off the engine. Assembly is the opposite of disassembly and it's time to fit them back to the engine. But first I coat the threads using SAS Nutlock. It's important not to use too much of this, you just need a little bit. Apart from holding the parts in position, it's very good at blocking up any holes in the parts, so be careful. Here are the first four in position and they look a lot better in the correct alignment. The job is completed by applying a little bit more SAS nut lock and screwing the final two cylinder drains in position. A quick note, they don't need to be tight. I fitted them using hand pressure only. If you over tighten cylinder drains, they are easily deformed because they're only made from brass and if you deform them, they will leak. In the final part of this video, I'm showing you this. It's my whetstone in its box, and I'm going to be using this in the next episode to level up some pipe flanges so they don't leak. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.